такое. Саляму алейкум ва рахматуллахи ва баракату. Альхамдулиллах. Альхамдулиллах и нахмадуху ва наста'инуху ва наста'гфируху. Ва нуъмину бихи ва натавакалу алейху. Ва наузу биллахи мин шурури анфусина ва мин сайяти амалина. Ва наузу биллахи мин шурури анфусина ва мин сайяти амалина. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم My respected elders Brothers, youngsters, highly respectable mothers and sisters of the Ummati Muslimah. It's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this blessed month. And in this blessed month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the tawfiq, given us the opportunity, ability to come to the masjid and pray Salatul Asr with the Jama'at and sit in this halaqa, this gathering, this muzakira where the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned the sifat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are mentioned and the sifat of his beloved sahaba Rizwanullahi ta'ala alim ajma'een are mentioned the sahaba Rizwanullahi ta'ala alim ajma'een were mountains that you know that were steadfast they were bright shining stars of hidayat and like I mentioned this past Monday we mentioned the Sacrifices of the Sahaba is one Allah Ta'ala Ali Majma'een. And I mentioned one hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said that لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That you cannot attain that high level of Iman, the desired level of Iman, the Iman that is matloob, the Iman that is desired until and unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And the way the ulama have detailed this is when a person, you know, he, he tries to establish this love, he gets an opportunity to stay away from sins like hasad and kibr and boos. So if he does not have jealousy, if he does not have kibr, arrogance, if he does not have bulls, hatred, then to get to that level of Iman would be easy for him. You know, and the Sahaba, they exemplified this. You know, in the battlefield, when Sahabi is about to pass away, person brings water to him. He says, take it to the next Sahabi, take it to the next person, he's about to, he's about to pass away. He goes to that Sahabi, he says, go to the next one. By the time the person who's taking the water, he, he reaches that third Sahabi, he's passed away. So he goes back, he goes back to the second one. By the time he gets there, he has also passed away. And by the time he makes a turn and he comes back to the first one, he's gone. So this was the high level of love that the Sahaba had for each other. And Imam Ghazali, rahmatullah alayhi, is in, in the detail of this hadith, he mentions that to, to give an example, he states that one time a person, he had a, a problem in his house, the rats had infested his house, so he had a problem. And so he was trying to find a solution, so somebody gave him an, a mashwara that, you know, why don't you get a cat? The cat, as soon as the rats, they smell the cat or they see it, they will, you know, they will automatically go run away. So this person, he says that when I, if I get a cat, the rats will go to my neighbor's house. And if I don't like this problem, this nuisance in my house, how can I, how, you know, it, this, this does not befit me. 
I, you know, if I don't desire something for myself, there's no way I will desire it for my, for my brother. So this was the love of the Sahaba. And today, the, the sifat of the Sahaba that I want you to talk about briefly was the sifat of ittiba and love, the obedience and love that they had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But before that, to draw a parallel, to draw a similarity, I want to highlight the treatment of the previous nations with the Anbiya So one time, a very rich man from the, among the Bani Israel, he was murdered. And inshallah, I will go in, into brief detail. And they came to Musa alayhi salam, and they said to Musa alayhi salam, that you know this matter has fallen upon us, so you provide, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a solution. So Musa alayhi salam told to them, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ So this rich man from among the Bani Israel had been murdered and actually he didn't have any male, he didn't have any sons, he didn't have any direct male heirs and he had a daughter and his nephew wanted to marry the daughter. So he put a proposal but the uncle rejected the proposal. So the nephew, he designed a plan, he said I will kill him I will get his money, I will get his daughter, and I will also get his blood money. So the law at the time was that if there are two adjoining villages, and a person is found dead in village number two, and they cannot find who was the killer, but the person belonged to village number one, then village two has to give the blood money to village one. So he came up with a scheme, he killed his uncle, and he dumped his body into the adjoining village. Next day, when everybody, they got up, they found the body, this person also, the nephew also came along. And he started making, you know, a scene out of it. He said, you know, somebody killed my uncle and great tragedy has... Yeah. A great tragedy has befallen upon us. So, you know, so they went to Musa alayhi salam and they said to Musa alayhi salam that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a way out of this for us. You know, we cannot find who the killer is. We don't want to pay the, uh, pay the blood money. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to find a way for us. So Musa alayhi salam told them what the amar and the hukum of Allah was. With qala Musa liqawmihi inna Allah ya'murukum an tazbahu baqarah. That Allah commanded them to go and slaughter a cow. So they started poking fun at Musa alayhi salam. They said a man has died, a man has just been murdered and you're telling us to slaughter a cow to find who the murderer is, this makes no sense. Then to, they tried to get out of this situation, try to think that Musa alayhi salam would come, with up with, come up with another scheme or another order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they continued to dig a hole for themselves. They continued to ask question after question. So <laughs> قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا ذلول تسير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرس مسلمة لا شيء فيها قالوا الآن جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون سوى أسمع سعيد سلام what type of cow should it be should it be young or old so the commandment came it should be in the middle they asked what type of color it should be so the order came this type of color it should be uh, it should have no spots one just one color and it should look nice to the eye and it should be one of the cows that has not cultivated the land. And it should be such a cow that has not pulled out the water from the wells. So they said, Inshallah, inshallah we will try to find this cow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to put them in a circle. They continued to, they could not find it. It took them a long time to find this cow. And finally, when they found the cow, the person who was the owner, he said, you know, today is my, you know, uh, lucky day rest of my life every day is a party so so they asked him you know how much is gonna be so he said let's weigh the cow 
so they weighed the cow and whatever the weight was equivalent in gold they had to pay to buy the cow to what to do what to it to slaughter it so this was the you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them because of their behavior with the Nabi because of their arrogance because of the way they would look down upon him or because of the way they would try to poke fun at him and then eventually they slaughtered the cow Musa alayhi salam told them bring a piece of the flesh and put it on the person and when they put it on the person the dead the person who had been murdered they put it on the person he you know he came back to life he pointed out who his murderer was and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know put him back because they did not have the belief in the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the power and the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limitless the power and qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dependent on any means not dependent on any asbab it is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that split the river for Musa alayhi salam it is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who melted the seal in the hands of Dawud alayhi salam it is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave the shifa in the hands of Isa alayhi salam and it is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who protected Ibrahim alayhi salam in the fire qulna ya naru kuni barda wa salaman ala Ibrahim and then this is one side and the other side is the love and the affection and the ittiba of the sahaba complete obedience to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it is the battle of badr the first battle between iman and kufr haq and batil on one side you have just a small army of 300 poorly equipped individuals uh, only two horses between them and on one side you have a very well organized three times very well equipped army uh, so this you know in the beginning of the battle there would be duels one on one or two on two and then finally would you know they would the armies would come against each other so it was the time of these duels and one young man by the name of Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr he comes and he says that I challenge from the Muslims who is going to come and fight me he is the son of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam give me permission I will go and fight there is nothing personal now it is all about principle it is all between haq and batil it doesn't Abu Bakr radiallahu doesn't care who, he had, who it is if it's just a mushrik to him he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam let me go it will be my sword and I will bring there will be no Abdul Rahman but Abu Bakr will be left the love of the Sahaba is one Allah Ta'ala is unparalleled their complete ittiba the one time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is making you know he's, he's, he's the khatib he's giving a lecture in the Masjid al and the Sahaba completely filled the Masjid and there is no more room left so the Sahaba they come inside and they start standing by the walls and start standing by the pillars and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells them to sit down so this is against the adab of a majlis that if there is no place you go outside you go to the adjoining room or if there is no place you go outside so Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he was not in that majlis he was not in the masjid Nabi. he was in the alleyway outside of the masjid but just the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam telling the Sahaba to sit down entered the ears of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud where he was he just stood, he just sat down he was walking he just sat down where he was because the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam entered his ear to sit down he was not even in the majlis he just sat down where he was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is one of the Sahaba who entered the fold of Islam in the very beginning. Rasulullah would go outside on the outskirts of Makkah Mukarramah to invite people towards Islam. The belief of the Mushrikeen, of the Kuffar, was that we are on the Deen Ibrahimi. Rasulullah would go to them individually and call them, invite them towards Islam, tell them that Ibrahim السلام, was the Muwahid. He was the one who called towards the Wahdaniyyah to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he would go out and he would invite the people. So one time he was with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and they were coming, you know, the rocky hills and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu were coming back. 
and they're very tired and they stop by this young boy who's a who's a shepherd and they ask him do you have any any food he says I, I don't have any food I had something in the morning it's gone they ask him do you have any milk he says I don't have any milk and these goat are not mine they're not my sheep and goat I cannot give it to you so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam asks him okay can you bring me a goat that is very very weak from among the herd bring me a very weak goat he says okay he went inside and he goes to the herd and he brings a goat that is very weak Maryal like is about to die anytime Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam passes his hands underneath the utters of the goat reads some kalimat and in front of the eyes of Abu Bakr anhu and this young boy who is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud right in front of their eyes the utters they filled with milk Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam by his own hands he he you know he he washes he you know he, he gets the milk he gives it to the young boy he gives it to Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu he drinks some himself and then whatever is left he tells Abdullah ibn Mas'ud then when Uqba ibn Mu'id who was his master who who was the owner of the herd when he comes back give it to him Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu says that uh, that was the time and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they're about they're going away with Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu is going away he tells Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu look at the face of this young boy and make sure you remember his face this young boy will be the faqih of this ummah uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu is one of the three Abdullahs who are the yani pillars of ilm of this ummah number 1 is Abdullah ibn Abbas radhiyallahu anhu who is the raisul mufassirin uh, the leader or the imam of all the mufassirin then is Abdullah ibn Umar radhiyallahu anhu who is also a muhaddith faqih mufassir and then there is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he he is the faqih of the ummah so this Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu one time in the beginning you know the muslims they were sitting in the darul arqam and they were making mashwara they were discussing up amongst themselves that you know the quraish they have not heard the quran openly so one person should go and read the quran loudly in the haram so they were making discussions abdullah ibn mas'ud he got filled with emotion he got in jalal and he said i will go so the other sahaba said that it is not good for you to go you are weak you know physically he was very weak and number 2 you are not financially strong and your tribal you know you don't, you don't have the backing of your tribe so people will be beat you to to death so he said no just let me be i will go so the next day right after sunrise when the kuffar they are sitting in darun nadwa they are making the mashwara and people are in the haram the haram is full abdullah ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu he goes and he starts reciting the quran in a loud voice people are asking what happened to ibn umm abd you know abdullah ibn mas'ud what happened what happened to him so they said he's reading the kitab or the, the kalimat that are revealed to muhammad so just when somebody said that everybody just went after abdullah ibn mas'ud and they beat him uh, he was already weak physically already weak and then he was just completely hammered down so the sahaba they told him we told you not to go he said just let me be allah is my muhafiz allah will take care of me so so much was the sacrifice and so much was the obedience of the sahaba and one time abdullah ibn mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu he was climbing on top of the tree and his you know his pindli his was very very weak so they opened up so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahaba could see it one time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that abdullah ibn mas'ud is such a sahabi that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will weigh abdullah ibn mas'ud and give him reward in return so the sahaba they started laughing how much this guy is going to weigh so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said why are you laughing they said look at abdullah ibn mas'ud you know he, he doesn't have much weight on him so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said that one pinli of abdullah ibn mas'ud this section one is heavier than the uhud mountain in the battle of badr saad ibn abi waqas radhiyallahu anhu famous sahabi from the ashra mubashara his brother umair ibn abi waqas was martyred so 
he even he saw that that his brother has been martyred you know he became jalali you know the emotions overtook him so he went in, into the middle of the battlefield and he killed Sa'id ibn al-As from the kuffar and when he killed Sa'id ibn al-As he took his sword and he took it to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said that my brother Umair ibn Abi Waqqas has been martyred and I have killed Sa'id ibn al-As in return I request that, that this sword be given to me so imagine the emotions you know his brother had been martyred he goes in emotion and he kills another man from the enemy then he gets the sword and he likes to keep that as as a memory of his brother and as as a reward that he killed from the kuffar Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells him that take this and put it in the baitul mal when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us the hukum because the hukum had not been revealed and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals ya yasalunaka 'anil anfal qul lil anfalu lillahi wal rasul fattaqullaha wa aslihu dhata baynikum wa ati'u Allah rasulahu in kuntum mu'minin the hukum had not come about the mal ghanimat at that time so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told sa'ad ibn abi waqqas that take it and put it in the mal ghanimat and then when the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself took it and gave it to sa'ad radhiyallahu the point was that Sa'ad Allah no did not make any you know did not say no I want it or this happened and that my brother has given it. no this is the hukum of Rasul Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas Allah takes it person in Baitul Mal in the Mali Ghanimat when Muawiyah Allah he accepted Islam he was like a prince Abu Sufyan was the chief of Makkah his son Muawiyah was the prince of Makkah after a while he had accepted Islam and Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu is Ajib Sahabi he is you know one of the katibin of Wahi one of those Sahaba who used to read and write and they who could read and write and he was the one who you know one of those Sahaba who would write the Wahi as it would be revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so and people say they say different things about Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu one time Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullah alayhi who is one of the teachers of Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi and he was also given the title of Amir al-Mu'mineen fil hadith someone asked him that what do you what what is your opinion about Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu and the person who was asking the question was trying to compare him with Umar ibn Abdul Aziz so Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullahi alayhi replied that what you're asking about Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu is a sahabi is a katib of wahi and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know the chest of Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu was you know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam touched the chest and made dua for Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu and Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu was alim was zahid he says that when Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu is the, was in the battlefield with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and just the dhul or just the dust that was entering the ride the safari of Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu the animal that he was riding those dust particles that were entering the nostrils of the animal Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi cannot even reach that status this is a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you're trying to compare to so Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu had just accepted you know he had accepted Islam and he had been you know in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so another young person another young prince from Hadramaut he came and he accepted Islam his name was Wa'il radiyallahu anhu so he accepted Islam and he stayed in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after a while Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him that you go and Muawiyah radhiyallahu anhu would go with you and he gave Muawiyah radhiyallahu instructions that you go with Wa'il and on the way because it's a very long travel you go and you teach him about the deen on the way so Muawiyah radhiyallahu anhu accompanied Wa'il radhiyallahu anhu on the way so this is the heat of the desert and they are traveling Muawiyah radhiyallahu anhu doesn't have a safari he doesn't have any ride and Wa'il radhiyallahu anhu the man who just accepted Islam he's sitting on the camel and Muawiyah radhiyallahu anhu is walking on the ground on the in the desert so after some time Muawiyah radhiyallahu anhu asks Wa'il radhiyallahu anhu that is it possible that I can share your ride it's getting very hot down here he says do you know who I am and do you know who you are I am the prince of Hadramaut I am a prince and you I don't know who you are you are no one to me because he had just accepted Islam so the 
So, the, the, the bond of brotherhood and that had not taken root in his heart and he still had those, you know, the step, the, 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 you know, the, because he was a prince, he, he's supposed to be treated differently. So, he says to Mu'awir that you keep walking. After a while, after they have traveled some more distance, Mu'awir shoes or sandals, they start to wear out. So, he asks him, why that you are sitting on the camel, you don't need the shoes. Can I borrow your shoes? He says, you are going to wear my shoes? He continues to walk. They continue to travel. After some more distance has been traveled, he again asks, can you make some accommodation for me? It's very hot. I'm walking in the desert. I don't even have proper shoes. So he says, I will make one accommodation for you. This camel that I'm riding on is, I'm the Malik of the camel. The shade that my camel is making on the ground, I will allow you to walk in that shade. From Madinah Munawwara to Hadramat, Muawiyah Razillah traveled like that. He didn't go back running to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, who, who have you given me? I cannot do this. No. It is the hukum of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Muawiyah Razillah travels from Madinah Munawwara all the way to Hadramat, walking in the sand and in the shade of the camel of Wa'il Razillah. At the time of Hudabiyah, when the Muslims, they came and they have the intention to perform Umrah and they have the animals with them and they are in the state of Haram and the Quraysh, they say, we are not going to let you enter Makkah Mukarramah. So they sent, first they sent 200 men with Khalid ibn al-Walid to stop the Muslims. Now the Muslims have stopped. Now they sent, first they sent Urwa ibn Mas'ud comes, then Suhail ibn Amr, he comes. And they start the negotiation with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now the Sahaba are full of energy. They are motivated. They have a very deep desire to go back to their home. They were, you know, pushed out of their hometown, the Muhajireen. And it's been a long time. This is six year of Hijrah. They have not been able to go back. They have this desire to make Umrah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And they want to go. They are ready. Their minds have already been, you know, they were ready that Rasulullah sallallahu we are going with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are going to make Umrah. And then the, the Quraysh, they stopped them. And then the treaty is signed. And Suhail ibn Amr, when the treaty is being signed, so the words that are being written is this is a treaty between Suhail ibn Amr and Muhammad Rasulullah. So Suhail, he says, if I had believed in you, uh, I, you know, they, we wouldn't have to have this, this negotiation. So cut this word out, Rasulullah, and write Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So Ali Rasulullah is, is the one who is writing. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells Ali Rasulullah that you know, strike this Rasulullah off. So Ali Rasulullah says, "I cannot do this. You do it by yourself." So this was the respect and the love that the Sahaba had. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself he cancelled the word or wiped that word off. And when the treaty was, the terms of the treaty, the Muslims are thinking, Umar becomes very, you know, very animated. And he gets very, you know, the emotions are high. That this treaty, this by, by nature, by the look of it, it seems that all the terms are against the Muslims. You will not be able to perform Umrah this year, come again next year. You will only be able to stay in Makkah for three days, then you have to go back. If any person leaves Mecca and comes to Medina, you will have to return that person. But if anyone comes from Medina, we will not be, you, we will not be required to return the person back to you. Anybody, you know, and, and whoever wants to join in a treaty with you is, can join, and whoever wants to join a treaty with, with us can join. And there will be no, 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 no war for 10 years. So on the face of it, it looks like you know, there are a lot of Muslims in Mecca who are being captured by their families. They are not going to be able to come to Medina. Even if they escape and come, we will have to return them back. So Umar anhu, he goes to Abu Bakr anhu, and says, you know, are we not on haq? And are the kuffar not the batil? Huh? That this is a treat, you know, why we should, why we should, you know, make accommodation for them? Rasulullah sallallahu accepts the terms. And the terms are accepted 
Abu, Abu Jandal, he comes. He's a Muslim. And he is the son of Suhail ibn Amr, the one who is negotiating on behalf of the Quraysh, whose name is on the treaty. His son was Abu Jandal who had accepted Islam. He had been chained and kept in Makkah. He comes to the Muslims. I have come. I am a Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu says, the treaty has already been signed. Ya Abu Jandal, isbir. Have patience. There is nothing we can do. There is nothing we can do. Now the Muslims, they are, you know, the emotions are, you know, strange. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes and he makes mashwara, he takes the opinion of his wife, Umm Salama radiallahu anha. Taking the opinion, you know, today we don't have this, this concept. Or sometimes those who have this understanding, they will take the opinion in worldly matters. But they will not take opinion in, in religious matter or they will not take opinion from the families, from their wives. Uh, look at the look at what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is teaching. And look at what the Quran when Sulaiman alayhi salam he wrote, you know, he could he could not find hudhud and hudhud. He informed Sulaiman alayhi salam what the fakad tayra faqal mali la ara hudhud am kana min al ghaibin. لَوْ عَزِّبَنَّهُ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا أَوْ الْأَذْبَحَنَّهُ لَا يَتَّنِّي بِسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ So Sulaiman alayhi salam, he went on a tour and he was looking at his, all the birds and he could not find hudhud. Hudhud was the special bird that Sulaiman alayhi salam that would find water for, for, the, for the army. So Sulaiman alayhi salam, he got, he was upset and he said that hudhud is not here. If I find him and if he does not give me a valid reason why he was not here, we will slaughter him. Slaughter Hudud. Hudud he, he, he comes and he tells that Sulaiman Ali Salam that I have found you know the of the Qawm Saba and then there is the Queen Bilqis. So when Sulaiman Ali Salam he writes the letter to Bilqis and he gives it to Hudud that you take it and you deliver it. And it comes in the in the tafasir that Bilqis she used to live in, in a palace is like seven palaces and every palace is inside the other palace so one and then two is the number one is inside the other palace and then the that one is inside the third palace so hudhud goes through the window all the way down to the first palace to the room where bilqis is sleeping and puts the and puts the letter on bilqis he doesn't know new security clearance goes straight from the window and gives it delivers the the letter and when bilqis she gets the letter قالت يا أيها الملو إني ألقي إلي إنه من سليمان وإنه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. She receives the letter and she gathers what she does. The first thing she does is she gathers her advisors that give me your advice. What is your opinion? This is a letter from سليمان عليه السلام. So the taking of the making of the مشورة. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every aspect of the life, if you look, if you go and read the detail, if they're in Medina, he makes the mashwara. When they go outside, he makes the mashwara. He makes the mashwara with the family. So Umm Salma radiallahu anha, she gives him the mashwara that you just go outside, you make the qurbani, and you have your hair removed from your hair. So Abu Zuma Balawi, he's a sahabi who came and he removed the hair from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When all the other Sahaba, they saw that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is getting his hair removed, all of them, they came. Uh, and all of them, they, had, they did their qurbani. And all of them, they had the hair removed. So this was the ittiba and the love that the Sahaba had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That no matter what the condition, no matter what the situation, it is the uhukum and the amar, the, the hukum of Rasulullah is like the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hukum of the Nabi is the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, give us the opportunity, give us the ability, give us the understanding to number one, like I mentioned last time, to have this build this level of sacrifice. Not that we are not required to make the sacrifice of the Sahaba, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this ability to sacrifice for others number one and number two make the ittiba of rasulullah sallallahu there is no better time of the year
to practice, to bring into life the sifat, the way, the tariqa, uh, the actions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One last thing, inshallah, we'll finish after that. When Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam were assembled in the darbar of Fir'aun, and the magicians the, that Fir'aun had gathered, they came on one side, and the whole darbar was there, the whole, there was a big majlis, palace of Fir'aun, and they, they know, the, the common people are there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only blessed with iman the magicians who had come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just blessed with iman the magicians who had come. The ulama have written that the magicians they came in order to, to confuse the people. They took the same appearance as Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam. In order to confuse which side is which. They took the same appearance as Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam. And the ulama have written because of this, because they may try to make the, the, they try to emulate the prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them hidayat. The Sahaba, their loyalty, uh, that, you know, the poet says, Name Sahaba se khushbuye wafa ati hai. Unke rozon se Muhammad ki sada ati hai. That just then, the name of Sahabat, because of the Suhbat, it automatically, you know, you feel an aroma of loyalty. Because the Sahaba, they took each and every sifat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They took the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They took the, the deen that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The message that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. And they moved to ev all four corners of the world. They didn't go out to conquer the lands. The azane kabhi humne Europe ke kalisao mein. Kabhi Afrika ke tabte huye saharao mein. Allah Iqbal, he says, very beautiful. That there was a time when we called out the azan in the cathedrals and churches of Europe. Uh, and there was a time when we called out the azan in the burning deserts of Africa. Dashto to dash darya bina chore hamne, behre zulmat me doradi ghore hamne. That we didn't even land is sub land keep land on the side. We didn't even leave the rivers and the oceans and the seas. We just continued to move, and we we traveled with behre zulmat me doradi ghore hamne. Like there was complete destruction all around. Huh? There is complete. Uh, you know, the, there is complete, you know, there is, they took the nur of Hidayat, of all the areas surrounded, there is no, there is no light of Hidayat. So they took the light of Hidayat with them, and they traveled with, on their, 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 their you know, their safaris, they just traveled. Abu Ayyub Ansari, you know, he's traveling. Abu Ayyub Ansari rests in Istanbul. He is buried in Istanbul. And Abu Zuma Balawi, the one who took off the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in is is in is in Damascus. So Abu Ayyub Ansari, he's very old. He's the one who hosted Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he came to Madinah Munawwara, and he is traveling. You know, in with with the, they are traveling. So he says his his time is is near. He's about to pass away. He says that don't bury me here. Bury me what your last stop is. Where you stop, Istanbul is, then, then there is the, you know, the sea, the ocean is there. So the Sahaba, they stopped at Istanbul. Abu Ayyub Ansari, he said that on the day of judgment, so I can tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that not only when I was living, I was traveling in your path, but even when I had passed away, I continued to travel. This, my dear respected elders, was the life of the Sahaba. This was their ittiba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, give us the ability to bring more and more of the sifat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the sifat of the sahaba. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.